Okay, hi. Uh, first of all, I'm trying a new recording technique right now, so if this doesn't work well, I'm sorry. I'll see if I can re-record it a different way. Uh, this video is going to look at applications of sequences in series. So one one thing about applications in general in math, especially in like a math class, is that the applications themselves are not really like taken exactly from the real world. It's it's more that it is a, a, a simplified sort of theoretical uh, problem that you might run into in the real world, but you would have to kind of use, uh, you'd have to kind of make the connection for yourself to apply this kind of thing to, this kind of thinking to an actual real world problem that you encounter. Uh, so, so here's the first one. Uh, you go to work for a company who pays you one cent on the first day, two cents on the second day, four cents on the third day, and so on. How much money will you have earned after 30 days? So this problem here is asking for a sum because each day you add to your total amount of money you make. And uh, what we need to do is, so there's a sequence listed here. The sequence is, uh, you know, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, and then we can assume that the next one would be 0 0.08 because the, the pattern that's getting established here uh, between terms is that uh, you multiply each one by two. So this is times two, times two, times two. And when we see that we have a sequence where each term is some multiple away from the previous term, that's called a common ratio. And common ratios are a clear indication that we're dealing with a geometric sequence. So, uh, and this is not what the question is asking for, but we can be kind of, we can kind of have an idea how much money this is going to be by thinking about how much money would we eventually have on that, how much money would be earned, like specifically on that 30, 30th day. Not, that's not the answer to the question, but it will give us some context to see if we're going to be right when we get our, our sum. So, uh, for a geometric, so for a geometric series, if we want to find the nth term, a sub n, we take the first term and we multiply it by the common ratio to the power of 1 less than the number of terms we have. So what that means is a sub 30, or the amount of money that I would make on the 30th day, is equal to the amount of money I would make on the first day, 1 cent, times the common ratio, which is 2, to the power of n minus 1, so 30 minus 1. And so if I type if I type this in my calculator, 0 0.01 times 2 to the 20, uh, 30, 30 minus 1, so 2 to the 29th, that's going to be, hold on, I actually typed it in my calculator, uh, 0 0.01 times 2 to the 29th power. On that 30th day, uh, we would be making, so 5 million 368, so it's like 5.8. Three seven million dollars just on that last day, okay. And so you can imagine that the number of the actual money we're gonna earn, like some, like the total amount of money, is is even more than that. So, so the the equation we need for that is s is the sum of a geometric series, which a series then would be 0 0.01 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.04 plus dot, 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 times essentially 0 0.01 times 2 to the n minus uh, 1 power. But that's like, it doesn't matter. I, I want to, I want to like find the sum. I actually don't need the last number in order to find a sum because the sum of a geometric series is given by this equation here. You take the first term, you multiply it by the common ratio to the raised to the nth power, you subtract the first term, and you divide all that by... Um, R minus 1, the common ratio of minus 1. And you can see if you were to factor out an a sub 1 from the top, another way this is often written is a sub 1 times R to the n minus 1 divided by R minus 1. Uh, either way, it was obvious. these are the same exact thing. Uh, but different books present them in different ways. So all we need to do now is plug in all this information, which we have it all. We have the common ratio, it's 2. We have n, it's going to be 30. So uh, And we have a sub 1, it's, it's 1 cent. So to, to plug this all in, we'd want s of the first, the sum of the first 30 terms in this sequence, in the series, is equal to the first term, which is 0 0.01, times all, common ratio, which is 2, 
uh, to the uh, nth power, which in this case n is going to be 30, minus 0 0.01, and divide that by 2 minus 1, which is one, going to be 1. So uh, when we do this, I don't know. I don't know what we get. Let's type this in the calculator. Uh, 0 0.01 times 2 to the 30th power uh, minus 0 0.01 all divided by 1. Oops, I forgot to type the 1. 1. All divided by 1. You, you will have, at the end of this amount of time, um, I don't even know what this number is. It's 10 million. So 10 million. 737,000. Four hundred eighteen dollars and twenty-three cents, which that's pretty darn good. So uh, I would take that job, if if unless it was like so horrible that I would like die before like fifteen days, because if it's fifteen days, it's not that much money, but it rapidly increases from there. So anyway, that's that's that one. Uh, this is completely an unrealistic application, but you could imagine if you did have like a a job where you made more money. Uh, like every so often you like increase your amount of pay then then this could be applicable in fact the next question is kind of like that so this next question asks would you rather and and the, the given for both of these scenarios is that you work for 10 years with a starting salary of $35,000 per year and then your choice is you would would you rather have a guaranteed salary increase of 1750 per year $1,750 per year or a guaranteed raise of 4.5 percent per year so this is a little bit more tricky of a question to answer in fact there's like double the amount of things to consider it's like doing two problems at once and comparing the answers and we also have to for this particular would you rather question we're going to throw out any subjective um, reasons why you wouldn't want uh, a certain like situation over another and we're just going to look solely on the amount of money that you would have after 10 years and, and make our decision based on that so this first, uh, this first thing here, this is an arithmetic. This is going to be an arithmetic sequence, an arithmetic series, and the common difference, d, the common difference in an arithmetic series is each term is some set num, set some set uh, amount, or some set value away from the the previous one, uh, and that that's a common difference away. So. Uh, the common difference is going to be 1750. What that means is my first term, a sub 1, is going to be 35,000. And then if I want a sub 2, I just say 30, I don't know why my pen is doing this little trail thing, sorry, 35,000 then plus d. And that would that would give me what my second, I would be making in my second year, and so on and so on. Uh, the second one here, this is a geometric series. Because uh, the common ratio that we're going to be multiplying things by is actually 1.045. So uh, you might recognize this kind of like uh, when we talked about compound interest. So if you had some amount, if we want to know how much money we would make it in the second year, what we would do is we'd take the amount of money we're making in the first year, 35000 and multiply it by 1 plus R divided by uh, 1 plus R times uh, to the to the t power this is simple interest but also would apply to how much money you'd be making based on like the number of years uh, you were working t is the number of years and r is the percent increase per year well, in decimal so for our problem here r is actually going to be uh, 1.045 because this whole thing right here is r not just the r inside that previous problem so R is 1.045 here, uh, and then let's see what we can do. So we're interested in the sum. Uh, we're interested in the sum of the – this is what we want. We, we want S sub N is equal to – now the sum for an arithmetic series is equal to the number of terms times the quantity of first term plus the last term all over 2. Uh, we derive that from the forwards and backwards uh, technique, which we kind of attribute to Gauss. Um, but there's, uh, th this is the stuff we need, and notice we're not given in this problem, we're not given a sub n. So we need to find a sub n, and we can find that easily because the, the general term or the explicit solution for an arithmetic series is, is given by, or arithmetic sequence is given by this. a sub 1 is equal to, oh, I need to erase that because it's not equal to a sub n, is equal to a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. 
uh, and we do have D and we do have N in this case. So if I wanted to know what the tenth the amount of money I'd be making in the tenth year is, uh, I'd say A sub 10, where N is 10, is equal to the first term, which was 35,000, plus uh, N minus 1. So N minus 1, that'd be 10 minus 1, or 9, times the common difference, 1750. And so A sub 10, the amount of money I'd be making the last year, uh, let me just calculate this real quick, 9 times 1750 plus 35,000. I probably didn't need a calculator for this, but it's $50,750. So uh, now that I have that, I have all the information I, I'll need for to find the sum. Uh, on the other problem, well, actually, so let's, let's find out what this would be. S sub 10 uh, is 10 times A sub 1, which was the 35,000 plus the, the a sub 10, a sub n, 50,750 divided by 2. Uh, and so the amount of money I would be making here, let me just do that real quick, plus 35,000 uh, times 10 divided by 2. So we would be making, we would have made, uh, overall working at this job, after 10 years, we would have made a total of 428,000. $750. Okay, so that's the sum for that arithmetic series. That's scenario one. We'd make that much. Now, if we find the amount of money we'd make for scenario two and compare that to scenario one, then we can determine which one of these things we'd rather have. So a, uh, a sum, and we did this on the previous problem, but the sum for an air, a geometric series is equal to uh, A sub 1 times R to the nth power minus a sub 1. I, again, I don't know why it's doing these little trails on my letters. I'm really sorry about that. r minus divided by r minus 1. So uh, in this problem, then, I already I already have a sub 1 and r, and that's all I need for this, and n is 10. So s sub 10 is going to equal uh, a sub 1, which is 35,000, times r, which was 1.045, to the tenth power minus 35,000 divided by 1.045 minus 1, which is 0 0.045. So S sub 10, when we calculate this, is going to be, I don't know, hold on, 35,000 times 1.045 raised to the tenth power minus 35,000 divided by 0 0.045 equals, it is $430,087.33. And, $430, well, the cents really doesn't matter, but, uh, so, and it's so, so for a geometric option, our 4.5% raise per year, uh, clearly the better option for us to have would be to go with the 4.5% uh, raise per year. Now, that's all. That's not even considering what if we worked for our 10th year. Uh, on that next year, we'd be making even more, even more, even more. So, uh, in fact, the 10 years is kind of like our break-even point for our raise option, our 4.5% per year raise option. Uh, any year before that, it would have been better to if we had only if we had said in the problem work for nine years with a starting salary of 35,000 per year, uh, we would we would instead go for the 1750 per year option because that would give us more overall. And so um, this is a, a way to kind of analyze that. So there you go. That's that one. I'm going to stop the video here and we'll have a second part. So that's part one. Thank you for watching.